We're starting to learn about the checking system, like how the authorities check on a dangerous sex offender who's released back into society. I don't, you better have pour a drink for this. Jesse McFadden was required to check in every 90 days, okay? That sounds pretty good. I'd be happy with that. But see the top line there? Self check-ins, self check-ins. He did them. He himself came to the Sheriff's Department in June and September, December, March. March was just a couple months ago, 2023. That's him going to them, not them going to his dungeon with all those restraints and filthy things and sex toys and, you know, chains on the kitchen counter connected, like drilled into the kitchen counter, you know, like computers everywhere. The sheriffs apparently didn't have to go there. This is what's just so maddening. This is a habitual and aggravated sex offender. And KFOR, our affiliate, discovered that these self-check-ins happened on those four dates. And during those visits, this is what the deputies would have to confirm. Your mailing address, physical address and phone number, Department of Corrections ID number, all occupants at the home address, all vehicles that you drive, and your current employment. But you rely on the offender, a felon, a child rapist, to give you all that stuff. Did he really tell them who the occupants were at his home? Oh, I just married a girl with three teenagers. According to the records, uh, one of the home visits, June 24th of last year, we're not sure if it was because of a complaint, but it's the same stuff. Just, you know, tell us your basic, you know, mailing address and vehicles and employment. Here's what's the craziest. The sheriffs, if they come to the home, are not legally allowed to enter the home if he says they can't. And if they are welcomed into the home, they're not allowed to enter into rooms if doors are closed. What? What's the actual point here? What's a sex offender going to want to show you in the bedrooms that have, you know, restraints? There was a second call, a complaint-like call, an anonymous female called in January of this year, expressing concern that McFadden was living with three underage kids. But since those kids were not his previous victims, there was no follow-up check. This is where I bring in Phil Waters. He's a retired homicide detective, spent 33 years in law enforcement, investigating more than 400 homicide cases. Get me off the ledge, Phil, if it's even possible. Well, thanks for having me back, Ashley. But I will tell you, I think I'm on the ledge with you on this one. Uh, you know, it's always uh, disturbing. And for me, uh, I have a personal interest in this particular case. I was raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma, about an hour north of Henrietta. So I'm familiar with the area. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I, this is one of these cases that there is such a failure with just the system itself. Uh, when I listen to you talk about these checks and these random checks and these where he's coming in and saying, hey, yeah, I'm still around and I'm at the way place I told you I was last time. And when they go to the house, they're they're. Uh, there's a barrier in the law that allows them to really do a, a proper check uh, commensurate with his uh, particular uh, registration as a sex offender. So all I can all I can tell you is, is that this is just a an example of a tremendous failure of the system in trying to protect the criminal and. Uh, it's just, it's heartbreaking uh, now that we know what the results are of this yeah, particular. Like I was, I have to be honest, Phil, I was really g gently surprised uh, to see, well, good. They had four quarterly checks, June, September, December, March. So he was keeping on track with the 90 day check-ins, but to hear that the system allows for, you know, look, you know, in your business that sex offenders are some of the most manipulative people and they allow them just to come on into the sheriff's department and let us know you're doing okay. They don't check the home for any evidence that there might be recidivist crime happening. Like, is this a, is this a, a resources issue or is this just laziness or could it be both? Well, I, I think they're operating within the scope of the law. I, I do not know what the law is in Oklahoma uh, related to the the check-ins for se registered sex offenders. So, uh, it, but looking at this and what you have already detailed here about some of the restrictions, it, it seems to me that the the Oklahoma's leg local, Oklahoma legislature needs to get on the ball here and make some real drastic changes involving these particular violators.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.